Hey, it's James Glass, and I am working late tonight doing a little bit of wiring. I wanted to talk to you about subpanels and the proper um, cable that feeds them. So, subpanels always get SER cable, which is uh, a cable that has four lines in it, um, and they are never, never, never bonded. The, the, the grounded conductor, the so called neutral, and the ground line are not connected together in subpanels. So, let's take a quick look at that. So this is this is SER cable, and this 20 amp panel, by the way, is fed off of a 200 amp panel on the other end of the of the house. And so I have a 40 space down there that feeds all that end. And then it was actually cheaper to run this service entrance cable and put a 20 down here. So my my tiny home actually has 60 spaces, and I'll use about 50 of them because of the way that I've organized my my wiring. So it's real real neat and real logical. So this subpanel gets these two ungrounded conductors. Each one of these, line one and line two, are 120 volts each. When combined together, they make 240 because they're differently phased. If you looked at the sine waves, they wouldn't match up. It gets the grounded conductor, which is the so-called neutral. Okay, And then it gets a ground line, which is an uninsulated wire. Now the ground bus down here, it's got all those green screws in it. You can double tap those babies. You can put two in each one of those. That's why it's shorter. But the neutral bus, you can only put one wire under each. So this bus and this bus are connected via this bar. And it's insulated there. So if you have, you know, just so anything, there's a, little, there's a little sleeve on it that insulates it. So power will come in to this. And by the way, because this panel is more than six feet away from the panel that feeds it, it's got a main breaker. So you can turn the power off here. And power will come in line one and line two. They'll be distributed down this, this bus here. Every other one is a differently phased 120. So if you put a two-pole breaker in, you'll get 240. And that's hot. and goes out to all whatever you need. You know, whatever receptacles, lights, and blah, 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 this, you know, you know, heaters, whatever, heat pump, whatever. And then for the 120 volt circuits, any leftover electricity, the milliamps will go back this grounded conductor. And this, this and, and the ground line will be bonded at the main panel, which is by the meter. And that will go to ground rods in the ground. But this ground line goes down to this bus bar and never shall the two meet. This panel could be made into a main panel. They do provide a provision for it where you can run a bonding screw from this from this lug that touches the back of the box. And you could bond the, the neutral, the, the grounded conductor, and the ground. But because this is a sub-panel, you never do that. And so what I often see is I'll see sub-panels like this, and it'll have just three wires coming in, which is SE cable, service entrance cable, and the neutral bus bar and the grounded bus bar will be bonded. Totally wrong. In the sub-panel, every sub-panel, the ground circuit, that's the emergency circuit that only conducts electricity if you've got a problem, and the neutral, the grounded conductor, are never combined. Cannot stress that much. So if you see a sub-panel that only has three lines coming into it, service entrance cable, it's wrong. Unless it's really super, super old back in the days before, you know, I mean, there's some really old stuff out there before grounding. But in, in the last ugh, more than a generation, since the 90s, every sub-panel is, at least since the 90s, and in some cases even farther back than that, every single sub-panel is going to have SER cable. So look for that. Hey, thanks for watching.